This video is specifically about partial molar volume, and it's generally applicable to partial molar properties such as Gibbs energy, enthalpy, entropy, and Helmholtz energy. In the equation shown for any one component I, its portion of the total volume can be identified when the pressure, temperature, and all other components are fixed, and by fixed I simply mean not changing. This partial molar volume, V sub i, is a partial derivative which represents the change in volume as a result of a very small amount of it being added to the solution while holding pressure, temperature, and the amount of all other substances constant. If one mole of water is added to an ocean of water, the volume goes up by 18 cubic centimeters. However, if one mole of water is added to an ocean of ethanol, the volume goes up by only 14 cubic centimeters. We are looking for a function that describes the change in volume as a function of the amount of substance added when keeping the moles of the other things in the mixture constant. Let's look at an example using measurement data that consists of liquid A combined with liquid B. A difficult to understand issue is that although partial molar properties only apply to extensive variables, the math is such that the property, in this case volume, must be expressed as an intensive variable, volume per mole of substance. Likewise, the moles of all other components, N sub J, must be held constant. The moles of substance are conveniently handled as mole fraction, which again expresses substance as an intensive concept. The goal is to show partial molar volume on the y-axis versus mole fraction on the x-axis. There are two ways to accomplish this, but in the interest of time, I'm only going to show one of them in this video. Maybe I'll make another video to show the other. The data consists of precise measurements of substance and volume. Substance is usually measured as mass, and volume is usually hidden in a density measurement. The density can be obtained in a variety of ways, but our for, for our purposes, it must be high precision data. Most often, we'll have two columns of numbers. One will be percent of substance, and the other will be density of the final solution. Our first action is to turn the percent of substance data into mole fraction. I'm going to limit the remaining discussion to a binary mixture. The equation expresses percent A as mole fraction of A, MW of A and MW of B are the respective molecular weights. X of A is mole fraction of A. Obviously, if we wanted mole fraction of B, we could form it as 1 minus X of A, or we could redo the calculation with percent of B divided by molecular weight of B in the numerator. Also, from the percentage data and the molecular weights, we can know exactly how many moles of each substance is in solution for every data point. Consequently, we can use the solution density data, which I've called row of solution, combined with the moles of each component to get the molar volume property. So in this equation, we show the fraction of A times the molecular weight of A in grams per mole and divided by the density of the complete solution in grams per cubic centimeter. That gives the volume, m tot, expressed as an intensive variable with the, mu with the units cubic centimeters per mole. In the second term, we do the same thing for substance B, and the fraction of B in this binary mixture is 1 minus the fraction of A. The conventional way to define this partial molar volume in a binary solution is to say that the volume total is equal to the moles of A times the partial molar volume of A plus the moles of B times the partial molar volume of B. Or, expressed in terms of mole fraction, we would say the mole fractions of A times the partial molar volume of A plus the mole fraction of B times the partial molar volume of B, and I've given that the nomenclature m tote. In general, these give different results since the moles of A are usually not equal to the mole fraction of A. At, at first blush, it would very much appear that V sub A 
should be equal to molecular weight of A over rho of solution. You can see there's an X of A, X of A, and then this could be V sub A. But that would not give partial molar volume as a function of the mole fraction, nor as a function of the number of moles of substance A. Instead, it would yield a function of the solution density, which is in fact the starting data set. In this equation, we have values for m tot and x sub a and x sub b, but we still have two unknowns, the partial molar volume of a and the partial molar volume of b. We can differentiate to get the complete differential. Here I've shown mole fraction of a <clears throat> times the change in the partial molar volume of a, and then the molar the partial molar volume of A times the change in the mole fraction of A, done the same thing with B. So if simply, I've, I've simply taken and done the complete differential of that term and that term to get this expression. By the Gibbs-Duham equation for binary mixtures at constant temperature and pressure, X of A times DV of A plus X of B times DV of B is equal to zero. If you don't know this equation, you can find a reasonable explanation at Wikipedia. Gibbs Duham allows us to simplify this expression down to this expression. That's because x of a dv of a plus x of b dv of b would be zero, leaving this term and that term, and that's what I've shown right here. Unfortunately, this expression has introduced what looks to be three unknowns. We have the change in m tot, we have the change in mole fraction of A, and the change in mole fraction of B, none of which we have any values for. Because it's a binary mixture, we know that the mole fraction of A plus the mole fraction of B has to be equal to 1. Therefore, the derivative of x of A plus the derivative of x of B has to be 0, which means that dx of a has to be equal to minus dx of b. That allows us to substitute for dx of b right up here, putting in dx of a with a negative sign, and getting the derivative of m tot is, is partial of a times the derivative of the mole fraction of a minus the partial of b times the derivative of the mole fraction of a. Now we can divide through by the derivative of mole fraction of A to get dm tot with respect to mole fraction is equal to the partial of A minus the partial of B. Since we know the molar volume, m tot, and the mole fraction of substance A, we could graph m tot versus x sub A fit a polynomial to it. Then we could take the derivative of the polynomial, thereby getting this left-hand side right here. So let's consider the derivative of the molar volume with respect to mole fraction to be a function for which we have a value at every mole fraction. In short, dm tot over dxa will be considered a known value at any mole fraction of a. If we reuse equation 3, we can solve for the partial molar volume of B. Here's equation 3. This was our definition of partial molar volume it, with respect to mole fraction or using mole fraction. In this next line, I've solved that equation for VB. And then finally, we're going to take this VB right here and substitute it into equation 6 bringing down the derivative of molar volume with respect to mole fraction will be the partial mole fraction of A minus, and this is just VB, solved from that equation right there. Now multiply through by this X of B, giving X of B times the derivative, and X of B times the partial molar volume of A, and then this numerator right here will just remain intact, we're going to take m tot and move it to the left and factor out v sub a. Here's v sub a factored out. That's going to give that factor and that factor down here. But x of b plus x of a is equal to 1, 
by definition of a mole fraction in a binary mixture. So that's just going to leave the mole, uh, partial molar volume of A, and it's going to be a function of things we know. So we have the final equation. Here we have M tote. Here we have our derivative for which we've defined a function through fitting. And here we have the mole fraction of B. So let's do an example with an ethanol water mixture and see what happens. Our data set, which I got from Wikipedia, looks something like this. Obviously, I'm not showing most of the data values, and if you want them all, go to the Wikipedia ethanol page and get them. The data consists of percent ethanol in water and density of the final solution in two long columns. There's data for every single percentage. Next, we will form the mole fraction of ethanol. Since the mixture is binary, the mole fraction of water is going to be 1 minus the mole fraction of ethanol. We will need the molecular weights of ethanol and water, which I've shown here. And I've shown the mole fraction equation taken from above, but now expressed with molecular weight of ethanol and molecular weight of water, percent of ethanol and percent of water. Obviously, percent of water has got to add to 100%, so you simply subtract the percent of ethanol from 1 to get that. That adds a new column to the data set, which is the mole fraction of ethanol. Next, we'll use these data to calculate the molar volume and add another column to the data set. This may be the least obvious step in this whole video. In the first term, we have the fraction of ethanol times the molecular weight of ethanol in grams per mole, and that is divided by the density of the final solution at that mole fraction, which has units grams per cubic centimeter. That makes the first term's units cubic centimeters per mole. The second term will have the same units and just does the same thing for water at that point. So the mole fraction of water is 1 minus x, and it's multiplied by its molecular weight and divided by the overall solution density at that point. The sum of these gives the overall molar volume at the particular point, and I've called that m sub tote. Here I've plotted molar volume on the y-axis versus ethanol mole fraction on the x-axis, and then fit a polynomial to it. You need high precision and a really good fit. I could have probably done it with a lower order polynomial instead of an eighth order polynomial, but it would have taken a lot of time to mess around with the uh, parameters, and I, I just let an automatic fitting program find this equation. Now we take the derivative of the fitted function, thereby getting the derivative of molar volume with respect to mole fraction as a function. In fact, both m sub x and its derivative f sub x, I actually kept five more decimal places than are shown. You really do need good precision in order to do this. The final step is to calculate v of ETOH, the partial molar volume of ethanol, and then graph it. Uh, this is the equation that we used that we had found before. And here we have partial molar volume in cubic centimeters per mole versus ethanol mole fraction x. You can see that this starts at about uh, 55 cubic centimeters per mole, actually drops to nearly 53, and then rises up again to about 58.6 or so. So that concludes the first method for finding partial molar volume. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. When I get around to making the other method for doing this, I'll post a link in the description. Thank you.